Well, hello there, Scrub Lords, and today we're going to be discussing the IS-6, and we are going to be showing you how to kill it, because many people see cannot seem to figure this stupid thing out. And this vehicle has been in the game for about a month now, and I was waiting for a little bit to see how well the community actually picked up on how to kill this thing. And it appears that that has never happened, or at least not to a great extent. So, this video, it's going to be a very long video, and I have, to make it easier on you guys, put timestamps in the video description of the video, or of this, to allow you guys to skip around to see what vehicles are good against it, and uh, also what vehicles are bad against it, as well as seeing how the, each one of these vehicles potentially destroys this. Now, I am going to be taking a look at pretty much every single gun that this vehicle can face. The only exception to this is the M103, uh, which is very well represented, I think, by the T-34, as well as the fact that the M103's heat FS round is very well modeled in the fact that it's very similar to, say, the L7 105mm heat FS in terms of its penetration and performance. So the M103 will not be in this list. However, a majority of vehicles will be, or if they are, if the specific vehicle you are not in, that you are looking for is not in the timestamp, then we are using the same guns as those vehicles. So, for example, I'm not going to do three different uh, runs with the Carnarvon, the Charioteer, and the Centurion Mark III when all of them fire the same exact ammunition. So, for example, another example of this is going to be the M26E1, where I use that in place of the T32 and the Super Pershing, because they both, uh, all three of these vehicles fire the same exact ammunition. And generally what I will do is I will select vehicles that have the most different ammunition types, but still retains the basic ammunition types you will use on others. So for example, instead of taking like the M36 and the M26 Pershing out, I am taking out the M46. And the M46 has access to all of the ammunition types that those vehicles use, as well as the heat round that it is available to use. In any case, we're going to start off with the T-34, the American uh, 6.7 heavy tank that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are in front of the IS-6. Uh, we have standard armor piercing loaded, and I have also uh, selected an APCR round. Now, as much as you may want to think you're going to get through the upper front plate of the IS-6 or even these corners, you're not. Believe me, don't try it. You can Now, there's a couple of things you can try. You can try going through here, but that is a very, very small target to hit, and you're not likely to actually hit it on a regular basis. You can also potentially try going through the cupola, ricochet off it. But again, that's going to do limited damage because you have solid shot. What I personally recommend is shooting at the lower glacis on the corner here, because there's a, usually a pretty good possibility you'll go through. In addition, if the IS-6 attempts to angle himself, put around right through there. Now, keep in mind that you do have to pull back at kind of a uh, 45 degree to 50 degree angle. If you try and shoot through it right here, it's going to bounce. So you're going to have to pull back a little bit farther in order to get through. Let's look at another angle. Okay, so if you are engaged in IS-6 from the side, some a lot of people like to aim for this upper side armor. I would personally avoid that. I would try and hit this area right here where the spaced armor is. These spaced armor plates are very thin, and because you're not shooting them at an, as much of an angle, you'll generally go right through. You can also penetrate the side armor at this angle uh, through these side skirts using vehicles like the Super Pershing, as I will demonstrate later. You can also hit the side of the turret if you feel the need. And personally, it would probably be a good idea to, to take out the cannon breach of the vehicle and then go for a side shot. By the way, avoid shooting this plate at all costs. Because this plate is very well angled, and even shooting it almost straight down from the front, it can be quite difficult to penetrate. Now that we've looked at the T-34, let's look at a few others. Okay, so this is worst case scenario, and before you ask, yes, this is the add-on armor package for the M46 Patton. I've selected the M46 Patton because it has an upgraded version of the 90mm M3. This is the M3A1. This gun is it capable of firing all the previous ammunition types that are available on the M36, the M26 Pershing, the T25, 
uh, and the M46 has its heat rounds, which are still wrong, but that's a different discussion for another day. So, without further ado, let's test a few rounds against the IS-6. So what can you do? Well, your options are pretty limited, honestly. Uh, if, you if you're forced to fire a solid shot, I am very sorry. Your best bet is to try and put a round through, this, through these optics ports, which is, frankly, isn't ideal. And neither is loading M82 shot, which has even less penetration. Your odds of actually penetrating the turret on the IS-6 are slim to none. Like, that is per pretty much the only weak spot on the front of the turret that you can reliably penetrate. Like, you can't even get through the optics ports very easily on this with this gun. And the forget about hit penetrating the lower glazes plate. You can get through the commander's cupolas. And you can potentially do a lot of damage there, especially if, if he's got ammo in the back of his turret. But yeah, getting through the front of an IS-6 with one of these vehicles is going to be challenging, to say the least. At least if you have M82 shot. Let's load APCR and see how that fares. You can get through the turret with APCR. But that's not ideal either, and if the armor is sloped, then, well, forget it. Ideally, what you want to have is your heat rounds. And even then, the heat rounds are not guaranteed to bring you success. And you can see how it's flashing like that. That's RNG rolling to see whether or not this thing actually goes in. It's pretty much a 50-50 chance whether or not you actually go in through the front. You see, that one went through. But a majority of these are not. Also, spaced armor on the gun mount is going to stop most of your heat shells, so keep that in mind. There is a possibility of you going through the lower gla uh, glasses plate, but again, I cannot recommend relying on that. And if you do go through, there is a possibility you may set off the ammo racks, but this ammo rack is being extremely... There we go. Only took me all my ammunition to take out the IS-6 through there. So this is worst case scenario. Ideally, you simply want to disengage from the IS-6 and flank him. Because simply trying to shoot at him through, the, through his frontal armor, unless you can manage to get a shot on his commander's cupolas, which are quite small targets, it's not ideal. Actually, let's try this with M82 shots. You're going to have, from what I'm seeing here, you're going to have far better results shooting at him with M82 shot. Even through the regular side armor like this, you're going to do loads of damage with your APHE from the 90mm guns, which is to be expected. These guns are quite powerful if they can manage to penetrate. IS-6. Don't sh By the way, with this 90mm gun, do not shoot this upper, far this upper plate here. The armor behind the tracks, the reason why you see me pointing to this all the time on all the other vehicles is because it's totally flat behind the tracks. And these side skirts give you a perfect aiming point. And with the amount of explosive filler in these APHE rounds, you're going to do loads of damage. Alright, let's switch over to the American Long uh, 90mm gun and see how that fares. Okay. For this test on the long 90mm guns, I've selected the M26E1 because it's a little bit faster in getting around the range. It has the exact same armor performance as both the T32, uh, wherever that is. I believe it's somewhere around here. Anyway, it has the exact same perform. Oh, there it is. It has the exact same gun performance as the T32 and the Super Pershing that you see over there in the corner. So, this is going to be an accurate test. Alright, so the ammunition you're most likely going to have loaded is your M82 shot again. With the M82 shot on this gun, you have actually about the same penetration as the IS-6. So let's see with similar penetration, what can you do against it? Well, not a lot. Um, the lower glazes is pretty much a no-go. Uh, because it do because the 90mm just simply does not have the mass to potentially overmatch the, uh, the lower glazes on the IS-6. You can potentially get through these optics ports, but again... You're going to have difficulty doing that simply because you don't have the higher level penetration. 
Your best bet, if you're fighting an IS-6 from the front, is to go for the Commander's Cupolas. Now, my recommendation on these Commander's Cupolas, as, I, as many of you have seen throughout the testing, is to aim a little bit low on them. If you do that, you're far more likely to penetrate and go through and do some serious damage to the vehicle. And, you, and I'm going to fire multiple shots here. Let's try shooting the other cupola. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter. If you manage to put a shot through the cupola, using one of these guns, you're going to do loads of damage. Alright, let's change angles here and see how well you do with side shots. Okay, so this is about the normal angle for when IS-6 comes around a corner. Or at least in most cases. If an IS-6 is coming around a corner like this, then you want to aim again, as I've said before, for that particular little, er little area. Give me one second here. There we go. And put a shot there. Now granted, I'm noticing that there's a lot, of, that there's a major pattern forming here that you have to aim for very small weak spots in the IS-6, and I think that's probably the reason why so many people have issues with this tank. It's not so much that the tank is just overpowered or broken, it's just a matter of the fact that there's so much RNG involved with trying to take this thing out normally on a regular basis that a lot of people just get frustrated. The key thing to think about if you see an IS-6 is to not panic. If you see an enemy tank and you panic, you're going to dunk your shot and you're going to get yourself killed. It's critical that if you find an enemy tank that's very strong and you are in a position to potentially kill it, you calm down, aim, and fire. So, in this case... At this angle, you can manage to get through the side armor of the IS-6. Again, you can either aim for this little triangle above the tracks and below the major hull. By the way, you do not want to hit this part or the upper side. Uh, also, unless you are flat on, avoid shooting this part, especially if you are at an angle like this. And just aim for the side skirts. Preferably the front two. If you hit the last, if you hit the, like, I, I'd say, like, the third, uh, anything past the second pair of bolts on these side skirts, you're taking a huge risk. And even at this angle, I would not recommend shooting it there, or shooting the IS-6 there. If you can, I would say either t take a shot at his gun barrel and then take a shot at his commander's cupolas, or you could possibly take a risk and try and d put a shot into this small area. Now granted, r keep in mind that there, there are certain areas that you can penetrate like there, uh, but there are also areas that will not penetrate quite as easily. So, let's try and find a yellow area. And that is kind of like a 50-50 chance whether or not you'll actually penetrate. Now, this, the flatter the angle, the better the chance you're going to be able to get through the side. And the M82 shot on the 90mm guns is devastating when it does penetrate. So, odds are, if you do manage to penetrate with either the long or the shorter barreled 70... Or, uh, not 75s. The long or shorter barreled 90mm guns, you can potentially penetrate the IS-6 and do some serious damage to him. Okay. Let's move on to the 76 and 75 millimeter guns. Okay, now I tried to use the T92 in that custom mission. However, they were using an older script to load the T92 into that, so it did not have its heat FS shells available to it. However, this problem has been rectified, and my assistant Excel here has volunteered to be a target for me to test on. Uh, the vehicle we're using here, obviously, T92, and I've got the heat FS shells loaded, and this is at a distance of 300 meters. So, firing at the frontal plate of an IS-6. No pen? Let's try the lower plate once we reload here. Goes right through with heat FS, kills the driver. Let's try to aim a little bit higher so we can hit the ammo rack. Uh, let's try that again. So it's kind of going through, it's kind of not, and even if it does go through, it's not doing a ton of damage. Uh, if, he if he turns his turret to the side there. Gunner, cannon breach. Let's try going through the lower glaces again. Nope. Okay, so. Let's switch over to armor-piercing discarding Sabo now. Uh, now, unlike the tanks that have APHE... Aiming for the commander's cupolas is still going to be quite difficult to do. And a distance of 300 meters, with APDS, you can still manage to get through the front of the turret. Now, granted, he was pretty heavily damaged there, so we just killed the last of his crew. Let's wait for him to respawn, and then we will pick up from there. Okay, Excel has now respawned, and so let's take another shot at the front of the turret with armor-piercing discarding Sabo. Now, the APDS on this tank has about 200 and... or not... yeah, 230 millimeters of penetration. 
and it will go right through. Let's fire there again, just to show it's not a fluke. And let's try and shoot the other side here. No pen. Let's try and shoot a little bit closer to the gun barrel. Uh, penetration, but it damaged only the machine gun. Let's put a round through the uh, front of the gun mantlet again. No, failed to, failure to totally penetrate. Fire again. Goes right through. Now when he respawns again, let's pull out the heat FS and see if we can get through the gun mantlet. Okay, let's try it with heat FS. Getting through the gun mantlet of the IS-6. Failure to penetrate, went a little bit high. Shot again, no penetration. Shot again, failure to penetrate. And that only damaged the optics. I think it's fairly safe to say... Hey, we actually killed the commander on that one. Uh, I think it's fairly safe to say that you should really only load APDS if you're looking at the front of an IS-6's turret. Uh... Yes, Exo, go ahead and turn your side to me and angle angle optimally. Actually. Okay, so if the IS-6 is angled optimally... I would normally recommend trying to get through the side, but even at this angle, it's going to be difficult to do. Alright. Now, something I do want to demonstrate for you, and I'm actually kind of curious myself, this holds up, is how well the Heat FS shells do against the spaced side skirts on the side of the IS-6. Because uh, if you are firing Heat FS at the side of an IS-6, it's important to realize that space armor could really throw off your, uh, your shells. Alright, let's take a shot. Well, that was kind of unexpected. I honestly thought it would stop the Heat FS. Apparently not. Okay, and without further ado, I think it pretty much proves the point that the T-92 and the M-41 Walker Bulldog with APDS and Heat FS are more than capable of dealing with IS-6. Alright, let's switch over to the T-29. Okay, and we are back live with the T-29 and the American 105mm guns, which I haven't quite covered yet. Again, I would normally do this in the tank polygon, but I've already got, I've already dragged Axel out here to be a test dummy for me, so might as well take advantage of it. Any case, so what are your options if you've got the T-29? Well, you're most likely not going to have your standard ammunition loaded because the T-32 shot is pretty awful. So what you're most likely going to have loaded is the T-13. Now your T-13 is about just under 220 millimeters of penetration at best, and this is at about... Let's see here, 190 meters, so this is about normal combat distance. At this range, you've got a couple of options available to you. You can, one, sh try and shoot the commander's cupola, which if you do, you can do some serious damage to the interior of the vehicle. Uh, there's also the possibility of putting, trying to put a shot through the, uh, through the optics of the IS-6, but that is quite difficult to do. And honestly, your best bet is to either put a shot through the commander's cupolas, like so, or if you feel really lucky, you can try and shot trap around off of the chin of the IS-6's turret. However, that's kind of difficult to do, and I wouldn't rely on it. Anyways, let's move on to a side shot on the IS-6. Okay, so we've got the IS-6 lined up here on a side shot. Now, you've got a couple of options here. The gun should have enough penetration to get through the side armor. I'm going to try and shoot for the engine deck here. Yep. So, it will get through the upper of the side armor. And, actually, go ahead and put the fire out. Yep. And you can also, frankly, I would still recommend shooting for the side skirts. Now, there's always the possibility your shell will dip a little bit low and hit the tracks. However, frankly, the side armor on the, uh, right behind the tracks is perfectly flat, so... If you're even a half-decent shot, and you don't panic, and you take your time, and you aim, the IS-6 will go down just as easily as any other tank. And it's important to realize that if you're panicking while there's an IS-6 in front of you is the worst thing you can do. You take your time, aim your shots. Or wait until he's distracted and looking somewhere else, then take your chance. If you get, st if you get stuck in front of an IS-6, and you have a vehicle like a T-29 or something with a lot of, uh, a lot of HE filler in its shells, Try hitting the commander's cupola. Even, especially if you are at close range, it's going to be much easier to hit that weak spot. Uh, also, engaging the IS-6 at long range, unless you have very, very high penetration rounds, 
or you have HeatFS or Hesh is not recommended. You're going to have to wait until the IA6 closes within about 300 meters of you before you can start reliably hitting those weak spots, especially Commander's Cupolas and so on. Alright, let's switch over to the M56 Scorpion here. Okay, and we are back with the M56 Scorpion. Now, why have I chosen the M56 Scorpion? Well, because it has heat FS shells with 320 millimeters of penetration. You get these shells on a multitude of other vehicles, including the M47, the M48, uh, Patton 2 and Patton 3, respectively. And you also get it on the RU251 and, I believe, the Type 60, uh, or the Type 61, medium tank for the Japanese. And all three of these shells have the exact same performance. So, we're using the M56 right now because I didn't, frankly, didn't want to have to switch, uh, switch lineups. So, let's see how the M431 shell performs against the front, upper frontal plate of the IS-6. This is at a range of about 450 meters. So, right. right through the upper front plate. Uh, I've seen comments saying that they can't penetrate this with, uh, with the heat FS rounds. Um... I don't see any issues here. <laughs> I mean, and you can't say like, oh, oh, this isn't a test drive or whatever. Like, th this isn't a custom battle. I have, I don't understand why people say that there's, they have such an issue destroying IS-6s with, with the 90 millimeter heat FS shells. They seem to be doing just fine, as far as I can tell. Now, I'll also, right before we switch over to the British here, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to take one out with the 76mm gun on the M4A3E276. Because I've also seen a number of people say, oh god, like, the IA6 is totally overpowered because I'm facing it in my Jumbo 76. Okay, and now we've got the M4A3E276. This is by far the worst case scenario. If you're in this sort of situation, then, uh, yeah, you definitely chose the wrong vehicle for this fight. Um... Now, if you're stuck in this situation and you are heads-on with an ISX and you are in an M4A3 E276, well, your first issue is don't panic. Uh, you have a towel. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you have a 76mm gun with APHE. Boom. You hit the cupolas. Even with 76mm APHE, you pretty much one-shot the ISX. Problem solved. Okay. So now we're back here with a side shot on the IS-6 with the M4A3 E276. Uh, much like the previous tank, uh, or much like the previous tanks, I should say, avoid shooting that plate right there. You do not want to hit that, especially at this angle. Even if you have heat FS, just avoid it because you've got better shots on the upper front, on the upper side armor. Let's actually see if this will go through. I'm not totally sure if it will. Not that time. Let's put in, let's put three shots in and see if. Uh, any one of these go through. Nope. With standard APC-BC ammunition on the 76mm American guns, you cannot penetrate the upper front, or the upper hull of the IS-6. What you want to aim for is the side armor behind the side skirts. You hit the side skirts, you kill the tank. That simple. So yeah, it's, a, it's totally possible to kill IS-6s with this thing. It's a matter of not panicking, thinking about what you're going to do, and putting yourself in a position to either catch the IS-6 by surprise, or to hit it in its actual weak points. We now have the Tiger II H SLA-16, and I know that a lot of people struggle the most against the IS-6 using this vehicle in particular. And I can understand why. The penetration against the- or at least when you're facing the IS-6 is rather low compared to some of the other heavy tanks of the same tier. So you've got a couple of options, uh, and none of them are particularly great, honestly. So if you're stuck facing an IS-6 in the front, your best bet initially is to just shoot the gun bear. There we go. So destroy his ability to fight back first. Now, once you've done that, you've got a couple of options. If he insists on sitting there looking at you, put a shot through his optics, which will kill most of his, uh, most of his turret crew. You've also got the shot, you've also got the opportunity, since you have APHE, to put rounds through the commander's cooper. However, these are both very, very small shots, and honestly, if you're stuck facing an IS-6 in the front, you want to pull out of that fight as soon as you can. Ideally, what you want to do is get the flank of the IS-6. Now, I, I'm not just saying just flank the IS-6, because obviously that doesn't work in every single situation. Now, unlike the T-34, I would not recommend shooting the, up, the upper front uh, half of the hull here, even though it's green. 
Yes, you may be able to go through it, but there's always that chance that it will ricochet because Russian bias. <laughs> Frankly, I would recommend you aim about here. The reason for that is, is that there's generally almost always an ammo rack right next to the driver. And if you hit that, you'll one-shot the IS-6 and knock him out instantly. Let's try this again. Also, if you are at an angle like this, do not shoot this upper portion. This upper portion will be a ricochet every single time. You want to shoot the lower half of this area. And ideally, you want to shoot it closer to the area where it flattens out here. That will take out the vertical cannon drive, the commander, and the gunner. And oftentimes, knock out the horizontal drive as well. Now, shooting down in here doesn't necessarily work as well on the King Tiger as it does on the T-34 because you don't have the same penetration. You can... There's like a 50-50 chance you'll get through it here, but... Even then, your odds are not very good. So here is how you deal with an IS-6 in a King Tiger. Or with any vehicle mounting the long 88mm gun. Let's move on to the German 128mm guns. Okay, so we have the Sturer Mill here, and this, with the upgraded ammunition, has approximately similar penetration to the T-34. The major difference here is that it's an APHG round. You can see... You can attempt to try and put rounds through the same spot that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can also try and put rounds in there, but you're going to need to fire at it at a flatter angle than this. Uh, if you shoot at it here, there's always a possibility it'll just bounce off. It'll just bounce off. Uh, remember what I said last time about shooting the underside of the turret right here and not the upper half? You shoot the upper half, you're going to bounce. It's, it's that simple. Uh, you could try shooting commander scoopolas. And because you have a 128mm gun, there's a very good possibility you'll set off ammo racks. And then let's head, around, head over here to the front of the vehicle. I believe, and I know I have it in an arcade right now, but this allows me to get around faster and point out the actual weak points. There's also a small possibility you might get through the lower glacis. Although right now it isn't cooperating with me. Actually, let's try it with uh, armor piercing capped. Okay, we are set up for a side shot on the IS-6. As you can see, the entire upper front area here is green. You can get through it. Okay, so we are set up on another angle of the IS-6. As you can see here, most of the side of the vehicle is green. There are some yellow parts, and towards the back of the turret, it is also red. Now, it's worth noting that there is a small, very, very small possibility that RNG rolls for you, and you might get through this plate. However, I would not recommend that. I would recommend going for the 100% chance of penetration and just shooting through here, or shooting through this area. Granted though, if the IS-6 is moving, there's a possibility you might miss it and hit that area. Which again, if RNG rolls in your favor, you might get through, but I, I don't like taking might as a, as a possibility. So, I would prefer just shooting down in there. Now the side skirts on the side of the IS-6 are not particularly thick, and they are not definitely not going to stop a tank shell, especially from a 128mm gun. Okay, let's jump over to the Yag Tiger and see how well it fares in the front. Okay, we are back on the tank polygon map with the Yag Tiger, and I've got the upgraded Panzergranate 43 loaded. So, you can put shots around the gun mantlet. Uh, if you see around the uh, around the holes for the optics, especially close to the gun. You can get through and damage the cannon breach a little bit, although you're probably better off just hitting the optic itself, especially if he's aiming right at you. If you have if you have this vehicle, and you're in a hold down position and covering your lower glasses plate, there's a good possibility that he's going to have to spend more time aiming at you than you will at him. Okay, you can also hit these corner cheek weak spots like we've discussed earlier, and you can see they will do massive damage to the vehicle. And again, you can always hit the cupolas, if I could actually get it to land. There we go. Again, never shoot at these corner plates, especially if he's angled like this. It will only lead to pain and lamentation. Still not going through the lower glacis plate, which is interesting considering the penetration of this round, and I was able to penetrate it with a T-34 earlier. Whatever. Again, if he's angled like this, do not shoot at the upper part of the turret. 
I'll keep saying these things over and over again because it takes quite a few times for people to actually understand this. If the enemy, if an ISX is driving around the corner like this, aim as close to this, aim as close to the optics as you can without actually aiming at the gun mantlet, and you'll go through. Okay, let's see how far we have to go before we can penetrate it in the side. Okay, now it's saying from even this angle you can penetrate the IS-6. Let's test that. It appears to be the case. Let's try it on this IS-6. At a slightly different angle. No. Let's try it again. Let's actually try getting through this corner plate. Nope. 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 Try and get through the tracks here. Nope. Your best bet at this angle, if he's coming around the corner, if you're unsure about whether or not you penetrate, you're going to penetrate right here. Just aim for this area on the turret. Knock out most of his ability to react, and then reposition yourself for a finishing blow. Since I'm pretty sure all of you are confident that this vehicle will penetrate the side of the IS-6. Let's move on to some vehicles that are basically in kind of in the worst case scenario if they run into this tank. Okay, so here we have the Panther F, and the Panther F is going to be representing all the other Panthers or vehicles armed with the long 75mm gun. If you're stuck with the Panther F and you run up against an IS-6, which will inevitably happen at some point or another, it's much like the Jumbo 76. This is kind of a worst case scenario for you. Again, the key issue here is not to panic when you come across an IS-6. One thing you can definitely do, shoot out his gun barrel. Or damage his gun barrel to an extent where he can't shoot at you. Your best bet, other than trying to go for a tricky shot on the optics, is to actually put a shot into the commander's cupola. And it may not do a lot of damage, but unfortunately... This vehicle is entirely reliant on you putting shots into those commander's cupolas if you want to survive. Hell, you can even do this with a Tiger 1. Now, if we're going to take side shots at the IS-6, that's something entirely different. Even when the IS-6 is angled like this, trying to put shots into the suspension system generally doesn't end very well. So, what I suggest you do is aim for up here. And remember what I've said before about other nations? Aim at this lower area of the turret. Do not aim at this upper portion. If you do that, you will bounce, and you will bounce all day long. You could also make a point to put a shot into the cupola right here, but the explosive filler on the 75mm shells are not guaranteed to actually take out the IS-6. Your best bet is to put a shot right in there, take out the cannon breach, and then focus in on trying to get around him. With your superior rate of fire, you can probably put you can probably try and put shots into the tracks to disable him. And then get around the side and put a shot into the center of his vehicle. Let's try that with the other IS-6. One shot at him. Okay, and we're back now with the STRV-81, which is the Centurion Mark III, and the Centurion Mark III slash STRV is going to be re representing the Carnarvon, the Charioteer, the Centurions, obviously, and then the FV-4202 with, with the standard APC-BC rounds. So, if you're in any of these vehicles and you have armor-piercing discarding Sabo, uh, this excludes the FV-4202 in this case, at least currently, as of 1.67, uh, you have basically one real good option, and that is to shoot it right in the turret face. There we go. That's what we were hoping for. Took out Commander, Gunner, Cannon Breach, and Horizontal Turret Drive all in one shot. Uh, let's attempt to try and get through the lower glasses plate. I don't think we can, but let's try. Oh yeah, well you look at that. And there you go. Okay, so we backed up a little bit. The same with the STRV-81. Uh, this is at 400 meters. So let's tr attempt to get through the lower plate yet again. That went a little bit too high. I'm finding more and more that you're going to want to aim for the edges of the lower plate. And not so much the center of the lower plate. 
Now granted, if you're engaging the IS-6 at this range, it might actually be better. Scratch that. Going through the lower glasses plate right there, knocking out the ammo racks, and that's kind of what I was aiming for. Uh, if you shoot to the left and right of the driver, there is generally ammo racks there, and they're powder charges, so they have a pretty good chance of exploding if a solid shot round passes through them. Okay, let's set up for some side shots. So we set up side shots here, and with armor piercing discarding Sabo, it should not be too difficult at all to get through the side armor of the IS-6. Let's try and shoot at the upper front, uh, at the uh, upper hull first. And, yeah, I think that's, I think it's pretty safe to say that your APDS will go right through the side of an IS-6. And if you aim for the side armor behind the tracks, you will 100% go through. Let's set up here again for some frontal shots with the solid shot standard ammunition of the 20 pounder. So we are back now at slightly closer range with the solid shot uh, APC BC rounds for the 20 pounder gun. This is going to be the standard and real only ammunition that you get on the FE4202, and it's going to be the standard ammo you get on the Charioteer, Centurion Mark III, STRV, and Carnarvon. So it's important to understand how this shell performs against the vehicle like the IS-6, and I'm going to be honest, even before I started testing this, I am not particularly confident. If you are stuck facing an IS-6 with these types of rounds, you are in serious trouble, and you need to get out of that engagement. Anyways, let's take some shots at the, uh, at the gunner's ports. That one went a little bit high. These only have about 219 millimeters of penetration, so about the same as the 105 millimeter gun on the uh, Americans with the T-13 ammunition. Wow, that was surprising. That one actually went through. It must have hit one of the weaker portions of the turret. Alright, I'll take some shots at the lower glacis plate since it's not going to get through the turret front all that easily. Nope, no penetration. I'll put some shots in the center. No penetration. No penetration. And then I'll put some shots into the left hand side here. So I think it's fairly safe to say that if you are stuck with this standard ammunition, you're going to have a tough time against the IS-6. If you have a side shot on the IS-6, let's try and see if we can penetrate the upper front, or the upper, uh, hull armor. You can go through. Let's try and aim a little bit lower, uh, in the side skirts. There we go. Side shots are easily capable of destroying the IS-6, and I think that's pretty prudent with no matter what gun you have. You can do this with the M82 shot on the 90mm guns for the uh, for the Americans, both the short and the long-barreled versions. Okay, if you have the missiles on the STRV-81, you can try and do stuff like this. And the missiles will go right through the frontal plate of the IS-6 without much of an issue, honestly. Even if it doesn't kill him outright, it's going to do se serious damage to his vehicle and most likely immobilize him so you can finish him off with a 20-pounder gun. Alright, let's move on to some slightly bigger guns. Okay, and we are now with the Tortoise with a 32-pounder gun. Uh, the 32-pounder only has one armor-piercing shell and a high-explosive shell, so it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, this has about 230-something millimeters of penetration. Oh, just over 243 at very close range. And we are at a distance of... We are at a distance of 350 meters. So, looking at that, so we probably have about 235-ish. Alright, let's take a shot at the turret. And I hit the cannonball. I'm not using my ace crew on this tortoise as I normally would, uh, so bear with me. Alright, reloads. Firing again. Bounce. It also doesn't help that the optics on the tortoise are only a one-time optic. This is the zoomed-in view. That hurt it a little bit, but nothing near where we needed it to be. Nope. In my personal opinion, if you're engaging the IS-6 at this kind of range, the only thing you're about, you're really only going to do is kind of hold them down and, uh, keep them away. There we go. A shot went right through the, uh, right through the optics. Gunner, Commander. That's what I was aiming for. Let's try and get to the lower glacis plate. Bounce off. Loading again. Bounce off the upper front plate. I've got to adjust my sights. No penetration. No penetration. I think it's fairly safe to say that the tortoise is going to struggle against the IS-6. 
That one hit the ammunition in the back and damaged the cannon breach a little bit, but it didn't explode. No penetration. It took how many rounds did I load? Uh, probably about 40 rounds-ish, and I am down to 15, so it took a significant number of rounds to put the IS-6 down, and I had to angle myself and fire at him at very close range in order to get the accurate shots I needed to properly kill him. Alright, let's set up for some side shots. And now we have set up for side shots on the IS-6. The frontal engagement did not go so well. You had to close to very, very close range in order to destroy the IS-6. Let's see how well they hold up from the side. Not very well. <laughs> And if we aim for the frontal area right under the cannon breach, putting a shot in. The enemy tank has been destroyed. Well, I think it probably demonstrates that pretty much anything will get through the side of an IS-6. Okay, so we are back again, this time with the Centurion Mark 10. We've looked at the 20-pounder guns for the Centurion Mark 3, Carnarvon, Charioteer, FE4202, and so on. Now it's time to step it up a little bit. So... First of all, I'm actually going to ditch the Hesh right now, because we are I already know what that's going to do. Uh, we're going to switch over to APDS. And frankly, there really isn't a reason you should fire APDS at the front of an IS-6, but if you happen to have it loaded, and that's all you have uh, for in that particular moment, or if you're feeling crafty, you can put a round right through the lower glacis of the IS-6. Honestly, it's probably a easier just to do that instead. So let's try and put another round for the ammo rack. That was a little bit too far high. And again, you'll see me, I'm aiming to the down into the right-hand side. Because that'll either kill the driver and the gunner, or it will set off the ammunition rack. Alright, let's set up for another shot here with Hesh. Alright, and we're back, and this time we're going to be firing the almighty Holy Hesh of Antioch. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say. And if you shoot the IS-6 with Hesh, you'll either destroy his cannon barrel, like I totally meant to do there. Or you'll just straight up one-shot him. Any IS-6 drivers know that the Centurion Mark 10 is bad news. In fact, almost any vehicle that fires Hesh is bad news for the IS-6. And the reason for that is, is that the frontal armor on the IS-6 is only about 100 millimeters thick, sloped back at a slightly more significant angle. And Hesh doesn't give the slightest of craps about angles, so... In any case, let's move on to some other vehicles, but before I do, I actually wanted to make a mention and tell you why I'm not using the Heat FS on the L7 105mm gun. Uh, first of all, I'm in the Centurion Mark 10 and it is not equipped with Heat FS since it is a 7.0 tank. However, the Heat FS armed variants of this gun on, say, the Leopard or the M60 or pretty much any of the other NATO uh, or CTO tanks, uh, the Heat FS is pretty simple to use. Instead of aiming for the driver's port with Heat FS, aim slightly off to the right of it, much like I landed there with Hesh. If you do that, you'll most likely kill the driver, hit ammo racks, or kill the, or kill the driver, commander, and gunner as well. So, if you want to one-shot an IS-6 with Heat FS through the front, aim just right of the driver's hatch, and you will achieve that without much difficulty. Okay, let's move on to some bigger guns. Okay, and we are back with the FE4004 Conway, and this Conway has the same 120mm uh, L1A1 gun as the Conqueror uh, at 7.3 battle rating above it. So, I, it, this is going to represent both of these vehicles. Alright, with APDS, I'm pretty sure we can get through the frontal plate, but let's test that. Okay, let's try that again once we reload it. No penetration. Okay, so I think it's fairly safe to say that you can't penetrate the upper front plate of an IS-6. Let's try this with the lower glazes. No surprises there. You can also you can also take shots at the front of the turret. However, I would recommend with all almost all of the British APDS armed tanks, go for lower glazes shots. You're far more likely to penetrate and do damage there. At the very least, you can set him on fire, and at very best, you ammo rack him. All right. Let's fire some Hesh, see what that does. As expected, one shot's the tank. Alright, and then let's bump it up a notch to one more tank. And we are back with the biggest gun in the game, the FV4005 Stage 2 with its 183mm gun, firing only the biggest Hesh shell in existence. So, before we get started, I actually have to do something here. Give me one second. Uh, controls... Let's see, fire from main caliber gun. Um, let's try this. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. 
Oh, and I think this, uh, I think this requires something else here. All right, and we are back here with, uh, the FV4005 Stage 2. And you're wondering why I am filming this with my camera on my phone. Well, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. And... Delete. And we are here with the last vehicle that we are going to be using today, and that is the Type 60. Now, if you're probably wondering why I am going over this thing and not referring to it via, say, the M56 Scorpion earlier, it's because this thing has two recoilless rifles. Now, granted, you do not have a lot of ammunition for these recoilless rifles, but the Gaijin didn't talk about this in the last patch, but they just got ninja buffed. Two 381 millimeters of penetration. <laughs> These guns have actually more penetration than the M103's heat FS shell. Granted by one millimeter, but still more penetration. And it's a full 1.0 battle rating lower. In addition, you can fire these single shot or at, uh, one at a time, or you can fire them both at the same time. So let's fire one. Yeah. And by the way, when I was talking earlier about the L7-105 heat FS, that's kind of what you want to do. Let's fire two shots at the same time. I think it's safe to say that the Type 60 is the bane of pretty much any vehicle it faces. A. Yes, I understand that, Yoshi. Alright, I think I've covered pretty much everything that will face the IS-6. Now, you'll notice I have not covered any of the Russians. This is because I play RB. And in RB, Russians do not face Russians. So... If you play Arcade, it's pretty simple. The Russians have APHE, just shoot the Commander's Cupolas. And if you have the Object 907, use your Heat FS. And if you have the T44100, uh, use your APCBC with HE Filler. Anyways, let's go back to the hangar and wrap this up. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video on how to kill the IS-6. I have gone through as many of these potential guns that you'll face uh, using the IS-6 as possible. In addition to this... I've also tried to point out as many times as possible these same weak spots on the IS-6 with different types of guns to show that the IS-6 is far from invincible and is actually relatively easy to kill. A lot of it comes down to one thing. Don't panic. It's important to respect the IS-6's capabilities, but, it's, but as soon as you panic and you try and rush your shots, that's the quickest way to get yourself killed when facing an IS-6. The IS-6's principal advantage is that it's so powerful because it scares people when it comes around a corner. They come, uh, you come around a corner, you scare the crap out of somebody, they dunk their shots out of panic, and then they get blown up by the IS-6, and then they go onto the forums or Reddit or whatever and complain about how the IS-6 is overpowered. If people would simply take the time and aim their shots properly... You can kill any vehicle in the game. This is not, this doesn't just pertain to the IS-6, this pertains to anything. Whether that's the mouse, the E-100, the IS-4, the IS-6, the T-29-34, any vehicle in the game, that it, you name it, if you don't panic, you aim, and you fire, there's a pretty good chance that you can knock them out. Now, the IS-6 is definitely one of the tougher nuts to crack because its weak spots are so small. The main ones being the lower glacis plate. The upper glacis is a no-go, unless you're firing heat FS or Hesh. Do not fire at the upper front plate, even with APDS. Just don't do it. Ever. You will not you will not penetrate, I guarantee that. But your main weak points to penetrate the IS-6 are the lower glacis plate, the commander's cupolas, and the armor behind these 10mm thick side skirts. If you've got a large caliber gun, say about 100 millimeters and up, and you've got about 230 millimeters of penetration plus, I would say you are good to shoot this upper side armor here. But again, you are far better off just shooting this area right here, and the armor behind that is only 100 millimeters thick. So you're effectively trying to pen about 110 millimeters if you shoot at the side skirts. I'm not going to lie, this vehicle is very, very well armored. It is very strong. But anybody who says this vehicle is overpowered is just simply not trying hard enough. Some people will call that me being mean. However, it's important to realize that a good player will make anything, will make whatever they can work. 
And if you were stuck in the in that poor jumbo with the 76 millimeter gun, and you run up against one of these, you've got a couple of options. You can either pull out, which is probably the best thing you can do, pull out of that fight, get away from it, put, uh, and get somewhere where it's distracted, get around its side, flank it, and put a shot through the side skirts. You do that, you one-shot the IS-6. Or, if you have the opportunity to, shoot the gun barrel, destroy its ability to fight back, and then put a shot into the commander's cupolas and one-shot them. American APHE, especially in, from the testing that I've done, has proven to be the most effective at one-shotting the IS-6, especially through the commander's cupolas. So without further ado, I hope you guys found this useful to you. This has been Money Miles Away. Keep your tracks checked, keep your bonds in place, keep around on the tube, and I will see you guys in the next video.